Well, welcome back. And uh, Your Excellency, I would start ahead because we need to speak a lot about this uh, important. Yes, it uh, is important. Uh, yes. Indeed. And let me start with the President co chairing the uh, highest uh, or the high level session of the Petersburg Climate uh, Dialogue today. The importance of that uh, just ahead of Egypt hosting the COP27. Uh, let me say that uh, this dialogue actually is a very good platform in order to pave the way for the uh, conference in November. And as you just mentioned in the introduction, it started on uh, 2009 in Germany. And Germany always paying a lot of attention you know, to this uh, subject, the climate change. So that's why this kind of co chairing it, it means that a lot of commitment from both sides, Egypt and Germany, in order to have successful event in November uh, 2020. And I think uh, today the, in, the, in the meetings and in the dialogue itself, uh, the President and also Minister Shukri and uh, the, uh, the Chancellor, uh, Mr. Schultz also, they, both of them, they addressed you know, the concerns of uh, both the industrial countries and also the uh, uh, the African countries and the Arab countries and the middle countries in the world. So uh, that, that was uh, by President Sisi, of course. And um, I think um, uh, from this reviewing, you know, this conference, I think we uh, can expect a sort of uh, a successful event in November because uh, 40 countries actually, uh, they were adhered to the principles of combating the climate change and uh, I think this is a very significant uh, uh, illustration that uh, when they come to the conference in Sharm el Sheikh, it means that we should have uh, tangible results, not just commitments or pledges, but also a, uh, a roadmap how to implement you know, this kind of dis discussions and how to implement the, the, the points which was mentioned by President Sisi and also Mr. Schultz uh, today. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of countries uh, spoke uh, uh, t t today in the, in the meetings, and uh, you can see that uh, each country has a sort of concerns. It may be different than the others. If you talk about the island states, they are so concerned that uh, maybe uh, they will uh, diminish and uh, they'll be, you know, sunk in the uh, oceans. Uh, also, the uh, other states, let, let us say, in the Latin America, the uh, forests there, I think they are also uh, under a, a great threat. Um, the, um, of course, the Egypt and some other countries in the north of Africa, they are also have a tremendous uh, threats and challenges in order to uh, combat this kind of climate change. So. Your Excellency, Europe is seeing an uh, unprecedented uh, heat wave and we're seeing uh, fires. Yeah, in, uh, even in the Arab world, in, in Morocco, for, uh, for yes. instance. This is maybe the first time you can see you know, this kind of fire. Maybe in Europe, yes, it is, we, this is a normal, I would say, phenomena. But in the Arab world, in Morocco, and uh, uh, I think uh, even here in, in Egypt, uh, we have uh, real heat uh, uh, for the last few days. So uh, all these changes, and I think uh, uh, the, the whole world uh, should, you know, uh, have a combined efforts in order to fight uh, this phenomena, because it is a great threat, and we can claim that the international community is sailing now in a turbulent sea, and if we will not have uh, 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 combined efforts, it means that uh, our children and our maybe the next generations will suffer a lot. Maybe for us, it will not be a sort of uh, um, uh, drastic uh, effects, but for the ne next generations, I am sure that they will be affected and then they will blame us that we didn't take care of them and we didn't take care of the planet which we are living in. So um, this subject is very important. It is, uh, and uh, I assume that uh, this kind of threats is, is always create a sort of detente between even the superpowers to have uh, a sort of um, joint efforts to combat this uh, phenomena. But I'm so sorry to say that uh, we didn't receive positive uh, energy 
from some uh, countries, especially from the G20 countries, you know that the, the, uh, the G20 countries, they are responsible for 80% of the emissions in the world. So I think they have a great resp uh, responsibility in order to mitigate this kind of uh, emissions uh, in the next uh, coming uh, years. Um, uh, but uh, uh, from the previous meetings, I didn't see uh, a sort of adherence to the principles that they should fight this phenomena. And uh, also, uh, remember in Glasgow, they committed, uh, I think, a hundred billion dollars yes. in order to help the uh, developed countries to fight this phenomena. And I'm sure that uh, even I think the Secretary General today of the United Nations, he mentioned that that uh, he didn't receive any. Uh, kind of uh, uh, of the money they pledged in the uh, uh, Glasgow meetings, uh, so it is. It will be a, a very bad thing in order that in each uh, meetings each year we will have uh, commitments and pledges from the international community, and then we cannot have a sort of effect or reaction uh, on the ground. And uh, we didn't have any kind of even improvement for the. Uh, situation uh, uh, concerning the climate change. Mm. So only words, no deeds. Absolutely. So I think this would be a great, uh, I would say, uh, threat to the conference. But I can uh, feel from the uh, words of the President Sisi today and even Chancellor Schultz that uh, there is a sort of desire in order to implement uh, what they will be agreed and also to force. Uh, the industrial countries in order to meet all the pledges they are committed and um, I think uh, you know we cannot uh, ignore the fact that uh, the things it has no borders it will reach everybody it will reach every country uh, even you are a wealthy country or poor country but we will have you know this kind of tremendous effects on all of us so that's why this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, inter uh, any international uh, responsibility, it should be uh, in the mind of every leader who will come to Sharm el-Sheikh uh, next November. When we're speaking about uh, uh, today the president in Germany for the Petersburg um, uh, climate dialogue, but also to meet with the uh, German side, we're speaking here about Egypt, a very um, um, heavy was a, a, a weight a country that is representing or is speaking on behalf of Africa at large. And we're speaking about one of the G7 Germany, mm -hmm. one of the strongest European uh, 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 economies, mm -hmm. and one of the most important industrial, uh, in, in industrial uh, countries as well. And both countries are very much into the issue of uh, climate change. We have seen a number of measures carried out by uh, Germany during the past period in order to uh, 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 um, uh, to overcome yeah. the, uh, the repercussions of uh, the climate change and this industrial uh, uh, repercussions. And Egypt has gone way Yes. ahead with uh, measures in order to be prepared even to host such. From your point of view, how important is the gathering of both countries to enforce or to put um, pressure on the rest of the world in order to make of this upcoming uh, uh, conference of success? Well, I think you put this question in a very nice way because you just mentioned that we have a big industrial country and uh, the other side, an important country playing an important role for stability in the region and uh, they have also a lot of capabilities for the new energy and the green energy and they can be, uh, I would say, a um, hub for energy for Europe. So. Yes. I think this is maybe uh, the um, uh, um, the new um, factor in this meeting between the two leaders. Uh, the new coalition in uh, Germany, uh, you know that it is a Green and the SPD, 
Uh, the green, of course, they well known that they are so keen to have uh, green energy and green economy and everything to be green. But of course, the uh, situation in Ukraine it forced them, you know, to might change their attitude and might change even their doctrine a little bit in order to facilitate the life for the people in Germany. Because uh, I think Germany will enter a very important, or let's say, very difficult economic situation uh, next uh, winter. Indeed. So uh, Egypt this time actually went to, to Germany with a different, I would say, not attitude, but at least diff different weight, as you just mentioned. Because Egypt uh, there as a possible hub for energy. Uh, you know, when we went uh, to Germany for many years or uh, ago, uh, it was all, always, you know, the idea of having uh, the help of the German companies in order to come to Egypt uh, to help mm -hmm. us to build the infrastructures, to, to build the, the uh, electricity planet and uh, so on. So this time, actually, Egypt is uh, there uh, in order to uh, express their uh, attitude to help Germany and to help European countries. We already, even before the Ukraine uh, crisis, we already have this uh, kind of link between Egypt and Greece, electricity, and Cyprus also. And also we have, as the, the president actually today mentioned it in a very uh, good way, that uh, Egypt, even before the uh, situation in Ukraine, we had this uh, forum of the uh, gas in the uh, Mediterranean. The Mediterranean gas forum, indeed, yeah. yes. And uh, so uh, that's why uh, we can say it as uh, uh, a sort of strategy in order to put Egypt and to have this kind of leap in our efforts to be the, uh, the hub for energy for Europe. So now uh, Egypt is ready and we have capabilities. Of course, we cannot satisfy all the needs of Europe, but at least we can be a part of it. Some other countries in North Africa, like Algeria, today they signed an agreement uh, with Italy in order to supply them with natural gas for $2 billion, something like this. So uh, the um, uh, south of the Mediterranean now, they are uh, ready to help the north of uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, the, the idea in the past was uh, uh, reversed, uh, that we always seek you know, the help of the north of the Mediterranean to help us to develop our countries in the south. But now, I think the, uh, south, the, uh, the north of Africa is ready now to help the uh, European countries in this uh, field of energy and I think we are able because we have a lot of resources we are not just uh, exporting uh, gas uh, natural gas but also we have the uh, solar energy we have the wind energy we have uh, many other uh, of course we are now trying to build our uh, let us say on the process to build this new uh, Daba planet so all these projects actually it will be uh, part of our ambitions plan in order to uh, work as a hub for energy for Europe and I think this would be uh, economically a very good for Egypt and also for the European countries. Yes indeed and uh, definitely Germany has showed great interest in the uh, green hydrogen that mm -hmm. Egypt is producing nowadays. Uh, before we move on with uh, our uh, discussion, let me first take uh, the uh, vis uh, or the uh, the meetings the president held in Germany today. And President of the Hasisi was received by German President Frank uh, Walter Steinmeier at the presidential palace in Berlin. The two leaders uh, held talks on bilateral relations, a means of uh, boosting their uh, relations, in addition to ways of coordination and consultation regarding a number of re regional and international. Uh, files. The president also wrote a, memo uh, a memorial message and signed in the presidential palace honor book. The president has, during uh, or since yesterday, met a number of high-ranking uh, officials. Uh, uh, the uh, German. Uh, uh, president but also the German Chancellor all it's before and a number of German high-ranking officials and businessmen let's watch 